Huh. Irony. Anyway, it's another one of those storyless reviews where I don't need extra time to write and animate my fanfiction plot or whatever. These animations take a bit of time, you know. Yo. I have plans for you. Oh look, another supposed GT killer. <laughs> That's gonna put some butts in the seats. The same K mark in the early to mid 2000s was pretty much dominated by the Gran Turismo series. Anyone who tried to make something in the vein of that either failed or fall into obscurity. The Xbox may have some standard exclusive racers like Project Gotham Racing, Rally Sport Challenge, and the sequel to Sega GT, but Microsoft learned the size of that same cake cake. And then in 2005, the year Infusia was released, a new IP from them comes in, simply called Forza Motorsport. Want to succeed in the same case of genre? Find an Italian war for a title. It doesn't guarantee you success, but hey, it might work. Announced at E3 of 2004, it was developed by subsidiary Turn 10 Studios, which are basically the 343 Industries for the series. We're all the big force, bro. The game was released in May of 2005, and is compatible with the 360, which I'll be playing for this review. Poor x can only play Forza Horizon when it comes to backwards compatibility. Aside from frame rate dips, graphical glitches, a few audio shipping, and the replay sometimes screwing up, the game looks perfectly fine. Which the same cannot be said about PGR2. I fear of enduring the emulation problems when I get there. Downside, unless you're playing at 640x480, the game only runs at 50Hz in power regions. Hope you like 25 frames a second, Max. So cinematic. Forza 1, you are what you drive. The game starts with the meaning of simulation, and here's some of the GT games are missing. Pit girls! Polyphony are a bunch of SJW pansies for not including them in their intros. Okay, in all seriousness, the intro is pretty much like in Gran Turismo. A bunch of random races while a rock song plays. Generic, royalty-free sounding rock song from Chuggy XL of all people, but a rock song nonetheless. Compare that to, say, Infusia. Uh, yeah, in-game montages just beat that to a punch. Disclaimer, this is just a video lifted from YouTube. When you play the game with the 360, the MPVs are super choppy, and it makes me sick that anyone would use that footage. As much as not using Blender interlacing and playing in 4x3 in their GT3 and 4 reviews, what the fuck is wrong with you?! Start a new profile and a new career. Unlike more recent Forza games, there is no taste of Power Race nor Jeremy Clarkson or whoever circuit truck about cars. We are an endangered species, you and me. Shut up! Instead, we agree with a region selection, where choosing one will make cars from outside that region slightly more expensive and rarer according to the game's stats. I'll briefly get into that. You have a healthy selection of cars you can buy as your first, most of them costing 20 grand. You know, these cars are good looking and the more expensive ones are better, but none of them are the first gen Dodge Neon. I mean, there is an SRT4 you can get later, but it's not the same to me. So I went with the PT Cruiser. You make me sick! You think I'm sick? Well then, how about I make this the one car everyone allegedly hates? My mascot car! <laughs> How does it feel, ya winklings? How does it feel seeing someone like the so-called PT loser? Okay, now you're just trying too hard. How about you go back at being boring? Well, let's start my first race with this beautiful PT Cruiser. Looking at it, the graphics are quite good for an Xbox game. So high quality, even the rims are on 2D textures. Look, you can even see the driver steering and changing gears. Even today, it looks like it hasn't aged much, although that NSX looks a bit odd. The cardboard cutouts don't even bother me much either. Oh hey, you can even see the paint to wall scraped off your car. Kept forgetting it was a thing, and so does turn 10. What has aged is the frame rate, hot take I know. Yeah, this is the only motorsport game to run at 30 FPS on console, which is the reverse of the Project Gotham games. Now sure, it's really acceptable, it doesn't have any bullshit motion blur, but after playing the next 3 entries and, well, Gran Turismo 3 and afterwards, it looks and feels like Whiplash. Considering turn 10 is pushing the system to its limits, it's pretty understandable. 
Audio wise, it's pretty hard to review since I'm playing it on a 360, so I often hear sound glitches like loud popping, AI engine noises being monotone, and even my car going silent, or at least the engine. So I'm just gonna say that it's a lot better than the Gran Turismo games on the PS2. Oh, that Miata just sounds good! Aside from the free remix versions of Lagrange, Iron Man, and Frankenstein, music is all original and. I despise it. No offense to Junkie XL who composed the soundtrack, but the racing songs sound generic. Like they'd be fitting for a Metal Jesus video or one of those old SmackDown games on the PS1. The only ones I like are the aforementioned remixes, the Korean Medium ones, and the title track, which you only hear it at the start in the profile menu. The rest are just forgettable tracks that are really short and you gotta keep hearing them a lot, like Turn 10 is forcing you to remember. Ugh, now I want them out of my head! It would be an insult to say they sound like royalty free songs because those are actually more recognizable than JXL doing that rock. Now, thankfully, you can play a ripped CD and listen to those songs instead. On the original Xbox, damn different oasis. No worries, I can just mute your music and listen to the MSR soundtrack. Wow, that was a bad choice. Well, enough ranting about generic rock, let's get to the real meat and potatoes. This didn't come from the pit, right? Now, after looking at the presentation and content, it would have been better to compare it to Gran Turismo 3. At least according to this guy. HA! I'm here to compare gameplay, not content, that'll come later. Of course I'll compare it to the game that came out the same year, Gran Turismo 4, which actually came out in late 2004, first in Japan. GT4 it is. I've conducted a test where I run around some laps in Tsukuba with different cars, so in GT4 it's actually quite easy to drive most cars, even the race cars without assists. The only ones that I had trouble with are powerful old muscle cars like the Cobra and four wheel drive cars which are quite understated when you put your foot down on the corner much like front wheel drive ones. Here it's a different story, while they're quite close in the best lap times, the FR cars are somewhat more tail happy, even the modern ones. And the race cars are hard to control as well. It's only made worse when you upgrade your engine a lot or driving an old muscle car. Help! The only assist that I'm using is ABS, which is something you can't turn off in GT4. But I did a bunch of races with it and I tried my best not to crash my car. Despite many paint trays, I have a careful racing style. And since there's no gear suggestion for corners, I have to rely on either my skills or my instincts. Or I can activate the driving line to the difficulty menu, I'll get to that. Still, it's best if you use traction and stability controls as a first time driver. It's quite easy to get into, even if you have to relearn the controls. Triggers for gas and braking set up the face buttons? Golly! Still can't get used to the face buttons for gear changes. I mean, I do, but they feel unnatural. As for getting off the track and hitting things, well, it gives you a penalty time that gets higher than the lap time, though it makes more sense in the time trials. It's a rare sign to play a racing game where you can get some sort of a dusty finish. However, there are a few tracks that can slow you down when cutting them, like the test track. And that tradition persists even on the most recent entries. It's annoying if you're trying to race clean without assist, but it's a necessary evil. You know how Gran Turismo up to 5 was started as the real driving simulator by Polyphony? They still do, but before 5, there's no consequence on hitting stuff nor cutting corners. It's all good in their book, unless you're doing the tests. Sure, 2 has mechanical damage, but only in arcade mode if you're okay with it, but even in 5 with its questionable damage model, there still isn't any consequence in most of the career mode as mechanical damage is turned off. This game, however, has actual mechanical damage, so if you hit something, you might have a harder time winning a race. Not only that, but it also deducts some of your winnings by how much you've damaged. Try not to rev your cars and stuff because that damages your engine, stupid I know. I will be pissed off, but actually enjoy a little challenge, go for a more realistic handling model, and other tidbits of difficulty. The hard opponents are quite a mess though. Even on medium, you come across races where trying to get first place can take a long time because that opponent is way further away from you. And damn, do they not break their cars in time whenever there's an incoming sharp corner? Look at my ass gift if I talk at this corner carefully. Other than that, they do recognize you sometimes, and they also do mistakes, at least in medium. 
Speaking of winnings, let's actually dive deep into career mode. As you might expect, you race against 700 opponents, any your cash, even more when you're first place, to buy or upgrade your car. Completing an event set turns you a car, there are championships and enduring races. Pretty sudden stuff for a simcade, but turn 10 didn't want it to be just another GT clone. I mean, Konami said the same thing, but that pet project was overlooked. To combat the shortcomings of that series, they became generous. Check the career menu, see this difficulty menu. Aw oh, yeah, universal assist settings. Making a race harder will grant you more money, meaning less tedious grinding in the first few hours. So no need to repeat events. Unlike in Gran Turismo where you do licenses to get to the hard events, this game does something different. It uses a... leveling system? <gasps> what is this, Racing Lagoon? It's really simple, you get experience by earning cash in races, and if you level up, you'll get discounts, unlock events you can race, and cars you can buy, and also be rewarded with cars with 5 levels. If you activate all the assists, driving line, make the opponents easy, and disable damage altogether, you earn way less than the first prize money, so you better step up your game. This is something that I really love. Not only does the game encourage you to go harder to earn more cash, but also level up faster. Sure, I do suck at it at times, and hard opponents are quite annoying, but even on minion, you still get a better cash reward. So you start in the amateur league, where you race in events with not much restrictions, being that you're allowed to drive a C-class car against a field of D-class cars. I gotta love how you can earn a Japanese car after completing the European Open Cup, as well as winning the Lancia Delta in the US Open Cup. American power is finest. Oh shit, it also applies to drive train races. One DFF challenge is an all-wheel driving Impreza. Don't ask questions, just do that event. It makes sense, but it would make more sense if the Impreza was the prize cup for the Asian Open Cup. But seriously, I gotta love the amount of laps actually depend on the driver level and track distance. As opposed to 2 laps, 3 laps, 5 laps, 10 laps, 15 laps, maybe 7 laps, stop! After leveling up to Tad, you then move to Professional, where you start to see events that require your car to be stuck to participate. It's alright when it's a race with the same models, when it's not the Cobra. But then you have stuff like Classic Coupes Race, where you won't know enough which car is the best just based on the opponent's list. It is recommended to do the event to see which car performs the best, at acceleration wise. The problems don't end there, since you have to race suck, if you make a mistake like crashing, breaking too late, going off-road, or your opponent being a dickhead behind, you're done for. You have no chance to actually get the win, so you have to restart, and get frustrated that you wasted all of your time only for screwing up at the last lap. Tell me, what difficult that was in that Cobra race? Wrong, it's uneasy. I sometimes hate video games. Like I said, there's championships which don't give you bonus prize money after winning all the events in any of them. That's a bummer. But you know what's a bigger bummer? In the Gran Turismo games, as long as you have more points to the rest by the end, you'll still get awarded with the prize money and the prize card, so I don't need to redo the whole thing again. I think you know where this is going. In Forza 1, neither clenching the title nor losing a few races and still winning the championship is enough to grant you a car. You have to win all the races to be considered complete and win the car. Which is stupid, but worse, the description lies to you. It says first place awards you with the car, not to win all the races to win the car. Which means I wasted my time with this RGT championship after losing a few races for nothing? I just. I, uh, 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 uh. <sighs> I feel much better. And the endurance races, which is mercifully shorter than most long distance events in the Gran Turismo games prior to 6. So no need for a Drivatar. Wait, did I just say Drivatar? Hey, did you know that Drivatar was actually introduced in Forza 1? Such hack frauds. It's basically like V-Spec, but a lot different. Instead of commanding your driver to try running races to earn experience, you actually instruct them by driving around on track as you do. After doing these 5 tests to game forces you, which is probably enough, the game they almost copies how you do to your AI driver. You can let them race for you and give them a cut when it's finished. But uh, come to think of it, it's nothing more than a novelty thing. There aren't any endurance races that have ridiculous amount of laps for 8 to 24 hour events. So it's no wonder it's gone in Forza 2, only for it to return in Forza 5 in a really different way. The game contains over 280 cars, astronomically less than GT4, but at least it doesn't consist of mostly Miatas, Civics, and goddamn Skylines. Sure, it has regional repeats, but they're kept to a minimum. The list includes some cars that might interest you a lot and are worth racing with. Not me though, it doesn't have the first gem neon which bumps me out. If only. Aside from that, here's Ferraris, Ooh, a bunch of tuned Japanese cars with weird ass body kits, a sub, this odd Seat, Porsches. 
Every car has a performance index determined by its class and number, which can go up as you upgrade your car. One is one of the best in class, but just because a car is on the same category as another car, it doesn't mean that you get even, as I've explained before. As for upgrading, it's a lot similar to Gran Turismo and... Ooh! Engine swaps? Body kits? Undoing weight reduction? What matters is this? Oh yes, some cars can look and act bonkers with these upgrades, which can apparently increase your car's rarity, leading to some extra money after races. Look at this Integra. It's no underground too, obviously. I mean, who wants spinners on your vehicles anyway? But it's quite a breath of fresh air from Gran Turismo's stark visual customization, especially with its library editor. I'm starting to feel like I shouldn't compare it to any GT game. By today's standards, it's dated as it doesn't have the features of your custom tool, like moving multiple layers, saving vinyl groups, and the inclusion of a storefront, but it's still a great tool to mess around. Sure, resizing is really slow, but at least there's the optimum mirror to the other side after you're done with this, with varying results. I'm no artist, but at least I can make the designs look tasteful. Downside are the stuff that I mentioned before, but also you can do this to racing cars and a few production ones too. You mean I can change the pit of my Cobra but not my Evo 6? This game sucks. 0 out of 10. There are 16 locations with 29 layouts without counting reverse variants, 27 of which are used in the career races. A far cry from GT4's 50 plus tracks, but still a bigger number than in GT3. There is, however, no dirt tracks. Even dropping your motion lace has one. Ah, well, I don't miss those white glorified rally cross tracks much anyway. Most of them are original, which is something you don't see in recent motorsport titles anymore. Forza 7 has the same amount of fictional track environments as real track environments in Forza 1, and yet the amount of fictional layouts are the same, amusingly enough. First game in the series, and already there's a number of green. Those are some huge curves. The wheel runs are quite a joy to race, except for Silverstone. I don't stand Silverstone in this house. Although Road America is quite anxiety and just with his long straights and corners, it's why I hated that one cover race. Oh, speaking of long straights, check out Rio! The only round corners here are these ones, and they catch me off guard most of the time. I can tackle this chicane with ease, but not this? Be glad Rio is different in 6 and beyond. Ugh! Oh, remind me of something! Yeah, they literally just chopped this part off, making it just two long straights at a roundabout, and call it a day. I mean, the track that GT4s have to write home about, but they think I won't notice. Don't worry, there's a longer variant which is all blocky and wider than expected. Maybe making a track in Jersey City was a better idea. Please give me a better city track. I take it back! I actually find Tokyo and Grand Trism a bit tedious. It's like, oh, I have to do this track. Long left around the park, here we go. It's like Twin Ring East. It's somewhat boring to me. Here? Welcome to Narrow Hell. Makes me want to play PGR 3 instead. Oh look, a really sharp corner right after the long straight through the tunnel. How did you know that I like getting my ass beaten by my close opponents? To be honest, I really despise the city courses. They're all speedy tracks full of square corners. New York I despise less, but I like to show up one more. Tony original, guys! Now as for the original road tracks, there's the Maple Staple. A fine track with a shorter variance and a rather unremarkable sunset. This corner is enigmatic for sure. There's this gun spa. Okay. And this come back first. Okay. Even if I like this inspiration, it's still a narrow hell to me. Could never get this part right. Oh hey, the obligatory NASCAR oval speedway, complete with an EFL road course. Wonder where they get that inspiration from. With its tasteful corners and even those that you can tackle with much speed, Sunset Peninsula is actually, without counting the real ones, the best track in the game. There is an objective fact that anyone disagree with me shall be executed by the federal government. Wow, that joke went dark. Then there's the infield test track and... Yeah, now I know why there aren't any events set in complex string in GT3. Sure, the layout and scenery are as pedestrian, but the slow corners, the narrow roads, and the long lift make it a tad annoying. And this appears as the last event in most championships. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of boring long tracks as you can tell. There are a few point tracks that have its own racing category. There's for Jimmy Kaido, which is a lot different than in later games. This part I recognize, but where's the other half? Pacific Shipyard, featuring alleyways and London telephone booths. Yeah, here's your special stage Route 5, you green bastards. Other than sections in number green, that's pretty much it. They're long and offer a different kind of challenge, but it's just like racing in a closed circuit. There's the autocross track, which you can only drive in free run. Not that important, but it's there. Much like Gravatar, autocross was gone after that, until it came back in some form in Forza 4. And those are more important than anyone, because they're actually used in career mode, but I'll get there eventually.
Furthermore, the Series Arcade where you race on a set of tracks with a set amount of laps. Completing a set unlocks cars for those races. And since there's no mechanical damage, it's fine to crash into cars. But since this isn't Gran Turismo, the consequences are more drastic. Time trust is where you do one lap races against the clock with a pre-selected car. No target time though, but they are rolling starts. So this is where the Gran Turismo free comparison makes sense. And that's about it for that. You have your standard multiplayer affair like Split Screen, System Link, and Xbox Live multiplayer, which you can do online career races to earn extra cash. I can't review the online portion because Xbox Live and the OG one got discontinued almost 11 years ago. I could try the excellent Kai but I have to suspicion that it won't be the same experience as back in the late 2000s. Plus, my internet is too shitty to actually play well without lag. Alright, what else is there? Wait, there's sheets? Well then, sign me up! So what is it? Not Liu. That's the cheat where you unlock everything from the start of PGR1. And it does the same here, as well as putting you on that level 50 in career mode. I get the feeling this is Microsoft's equivalent to the Konami code. And the other one just gives you almost a billion dollars. That's it. Forza Motorsport the first is really in job in the first 3 to 5 hours. You might waste a lot of time doing some sick race inspired live race despite the limitations, and the variety of events and cars as well as difficulty options offer great replay value. But like most simcade races, it can get boring as you progress to the harder events with its long races, plus the AI being assholes at times. Still, it's not as irritatingly tedious as Gran Turismo 3, it's not my favorite game anymore but I still like it. And because of those features and different playstyles, the Forza series we start to become a great alternative to Gran Turismo, improving itself with the sequels and their Ryzen spin-offs. Uh, it says here that I should put a Monday Night Wars reference on my script, as if writing one at the start wasn't enough. Mechanio did it! So, is Forza gonna be the series retrospective of the year? Yes. 